36. And I call on the uh, acting leader of Sinn Féin, Deputy Pierce Doherty, please. Gurmaigat, a can call you. Tanisha, ten made a harle in Sherbishi Morslante, Gondakari, Tisha Scanula, Gandout. I guess new winger like she is the Pashi Shah, Ak Gur Runyu Doherty for Garthi of Yid. Could in the Pashi Shah, I guess Jagari and Moyle, I guess the Impiaki Mora in Shah Majorish and Muni and Tagdini and Nish, so Sherbishi Morslante or Fodden Statch, I guess to gear him, so the Sherbishi Shah, I guess Nay gear him in you, Nanye, a Shah. The past non the higher Yenu, Augusta Ashark Omland the Yall in Ish. Nyasha Michael York will seal August Lantia Armoeshti in the Muil. Tonish to the findings of the South Kerry Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services Review are absolutely shocking and they're really troubling for all of us and should be. Anybody following this story will now know how distressing the details are and how devastating this must be for those children. Uh, and their families who were so let down by the state. But not only were they let down by the state, they were harmed by the state. 46 young people suffered significant harm, with a further 200 put at significant risk. And this harm ranged from extreme tiredness to high blood pressure, excessive weight gain, and the production of breast milk. Punished children were misdiagnosed. They were put on dangerous combination of medication. They were left to their own devices with serious lack of follow-ups or checks in relation to their medications. One family told a colleague of mine that they were so concerned with the changes in their child's behaviour and the child's appearance that they challenged the doctor, only to be threatened by the doctor that he would report them to Tusla. Now that's absolutely disgraceful. Failures in clinical governments and oversight have had real consequences for the health and the well-being of these children and consequences that will last for a long time. There was no consultant psychiatrist to provide clinical oversight, and as soon as a locum consultant was appointed, Dr. Sharma, he saw the problems immediately. And he must be credited for acting fast uh, and, and the decisive action that he had taken as a whistleblower. But also the treatment that he received as a whistleblower needs to be investigated. He claims he was asked to take time off and reassigned from his clinical role to admin duties. He resigned because he felt his position was undermined, and that needs to be examined. Now, while I, while I welcome that there's going to be audits of adherence to clinical guidelines and prescription practices, something that we and Mark Ward, or my colleague, has called on the government to do since March of last year, but belatedly you have just agreed to do this now in the last week, I believe that that's just not enough. Tanisha. It's only been a few years ago since three consultant psychiatrists resigned from the CAM services in Waterford and Wexford. Why? Because of how poor and how unsafe the conditions were due to understaffing. Yesterday we learned that more than 50 children were inappropriately placed in psychiatric units, which were adult units, over the last two years. Units that are unfit and unsafe for young people. So it's just not one person or not one area. This is a systemic failure of our young people and of our patients in many areas across the state. And it comes back to understaffing and under-resourcing, massive vacancies in consultants and nursing posts. And this isn't the story of today or yesterday. One in five consultant psychiatrist posts are either vacant or filled on a temporary basis. Some of these posts, Tanisha, have been vacant for years and years. And this is an issue that has plagued our mental health services for the best part of a decade now. Now, Tanisha, during that time, you have been Tisha, Tanisha, Minister for Health, and uh, through all of that time, you have sat at the Cabinet table. So there needs to be a step change from government. No more apologies. What we want is action. What we want is the system to be fixed. So I ask you here today, what are you going to do to ensure that our child and adolescent mental health services are fit for purpose? And will you ensure that the review that has been commissioned that looks not only on the guidelines and prescription practices, but also the capacity and gaps within the service. Thank you, Deputy Tanisha. Thanks. Um, thanks very much, Deputy, for, for raising this, this uh, very important issue. And I have to say, uh, speaking as uh, a public rep, but also as a doctor, um, I'm very disturbed uh, and very worried about what I've uh, read about, what I've heard about, uh, and what happened uh, in Kerry um, when it comes to 
uh, psychiatric services for children. Uh, and I want to extend um, my sympathies to the children who've been affected uh, and also to their families. And what it appears happened is very serious. Um, misdiagnosis and overdiagnosis of psychiatric conditions, uh, children put on medicines inappropriately, uh, those medicines not being monitored appropriately. Uh, and these are basic failures uh, of medical care um, that simply uh, cannot be defended uh, and should not have happened uh, and should have been identified and acted on uh, much sooner than they were. Uh, I think in terms of what we can do now, the most important thing that we have to do uh, as a state and as a health service is to make sure that we put in place uh, the services and the supports that the children and the families need uh, so that we can, if at all possible, uh, rectify and remedy the harm that was done. And that will range from good quality psychiatric care for the children who needed it um, to uh, other supports uh, for the families uh, to help them manage um, and deal with what has happened. Uh, you'll be aware that um, the report has been sent uh, to the Gardaí that, who may have a role in this and also to the Medical Council and of course ultimately only the Medical Council has the authority to sanction um, medical practitioners uh, if that's appropriate to do so. Um, the mental health budget as you know being a member of this stall having uh, come here and been part of many budget debates uh, the budget for mental health is now more than a billion a year. It's increased dramatically in recent years, 20-30% um, I think in the last few years alone. Um, but money and resources don't always solve problems on their own. And it can be very difficult to fill consultant posts, even when we're willing to offer a contract worth over 200,000 euros a, a year uh, through the Staunch Care con contract. And you'll know that uh, your own party has been involved in running the health services in Northern Ireland now for over 20 years. So you'll be aware of the difficulties um, that arise in terms of recruiting specialist staff, not just in this jurisdiction, but also in Northern Ireland uh, and, indeed, uh, and indeed, indeed globally. Um, again, as I said, my thoughts are with the families and children affected by this. Uh, and to learn of the systemic failings in their care is devastating. And I can only imagine how distressing and upsetting it is for the families involved. An integral part of this process uh, was open disclosure in action. Uh, and open disclosure has happened uh, on this occasion in a way that was better than perhaps in the past. Uh, so uh, among the first things that was done was the 240 young people identified as having received deficits in, uh, deficits, uh, in their care uh, and their families were provided with meetings. The HSC apologized to each individual at these meetings uh, and also in writing for any harm uh, being caused. It's clear from the review that there were significant failings in the care provided to children and young people at multiple levels of the system uh, and also failings of clinical oversight. The report has made findings in regard to these and there are recommendations to improve services. The HSC has considered the report locally and nationally and it has accepted all of the recommendations in the report and work is underway to implement them and that will be monitored by government. Among the recommendations identified includes an assessment of reconfiguration of the service uh, and a full nationwide audit of compliance with CAMS operational guidelines by all CAMS teams to make sure that there aren't similar problems happening in other parts of the country, which I know people will be concerned about. And as you mentioned, a prescribing audit will be conducted in each, uh, for each of the 72 CAMS teams nationally. So there are 72 CAMS, CAMS teams across the country and there'll be a prescribing uh, audit in each case uh, to see if uh, similar issues um, might have arisen in other parts of the country, which we don't believe is the case, but we want to assure ourselves is not the case. Deputy Doherty. Yeah, Tanisha. As I mentioned, this isn't the story of one location, one doctor, one problem, one scandal. This has been going on for, for years now. Um, and, you know, you'd be forgiven if you were just coming into office and you had an approach and you had a view on how to fix this, but you've been there for 10 years. You've been Minister for Health. You've been Tisha, Tanishje around the Cabinet table. And I, I want to know, because you could have given the same script or speech or response three years ago when the psychiatrist resigned from the southeast because it was unsafe and unsound in terms of camps. We do have issues in terms of capacity. That's why children are being put into adult uh, services, adult beds which aren't fit for purpose, which are being condemned by the children's ombudsman, yet there is no action. There is an issue in terms of the contract, which has created a two-tier contract. There was pay cuts that haven't been reversed. So I'm asking you, will the review include the capacity issues? Because there was capacity issues in the southeast, and there's capacity issues in the northwest. There's capacity issues right across the state. There is 3,065 children waiting on CAMS waiting lists. Over 800 of them have been waiting for six months. Over 300 of them have been waiting for a year. 
These are children with Thank mental you, health problems that aren't getting support by the state. So is there going to be any step change from government in relation to how we treat our young now, people Deputy, with mental health problems? Yeah. 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 Thanks. Um, thanks very much, much, Deputy. I'm a little disappointed that you've sort of chosen to try to make this issue, which is a very sensitive one, uh, a party political one, uh, or to try and personalise it politically. Uh, and I would remind you uh, that while you, while you may pretend to claim otherwise, you're very much an establishment party. And in the past 20 years, you've been in government on this island as long as my party has. And you've co-chaired a government that's in charge of health services in Northern Ireland um, that consistently uh, perform uh, inferiorly uh, to our health services here in terms of patient outcomes. And if you're holding me responsible for um, any clinical failures in the past 10 or 20 years here in this state, then surely your party is responsible for the failures that have occurred um, at a clinical level uh, north of the border as well. You can't have one standard for us and then have no standards for yourselves. Uh, in relation to capacity issues, Deputy, it's accepted uh, that we have capacity constraints, not just in our mental health services, but in our health services generally. Uh, and huge investment has gone into our health services in the last couple of years. You may not be aware of this, but we have 40% more doctors uh, in our health service now in Ireland than we had 10 years ago, in including 40% more consultants. Um, we have more nurses and midwives than ever before, 40,000 more per head and more per, per bed than almost any country in the world. <laughs>